The Aoun X7S. This right here is a special amp. And I say it's special because it's not an ordinary amp. This amp is uh, a little different, and I'll get to why it is in a bit. But here I wanted to go for that quote-unquote unboxing experience because uh, it's nice. It's a plain black box. It says Aoun on it. Very nice. Here's uh, your barcode with all your info regarding your particular unit, but I didn't want to show that because obviously, well, it's my unit. I don't want to show that. And we can put this to the side. As you can see, when it's shipped, it's covered by a bit of styrofoam. That's really nice, something I really appreciate uh, because that means your unit is less likely to get damaged, of course. And it's very thick, so I would trust this to protect my amp. Very nice. And then we get here, the box itself. What are the contents? This is where the cable is coiled up and it leads to the converter. As you can see, the converter isn't massive, but it's not exactly tiny either. It's just a thick box that you gotta, well, you gotta live with it. It's a thick box, but the unit is smaller, so pros and cons. Here's the unit itself. Let's put that to the side for now. As you can see here, it includes the manual in uh, both Chinese or Mandarin and English. Very nice, very, very nice. And let's put the box to the side now. This is the Aoun X7S. It's a class A headphone amp. As you can see, it's run, uh, you can, you have two options. You can either, you, blah, blah, blah. God. you can either run it through single ended or you can run it through balanced. And what does that mean? Typically you want to go for balance just because balance is going to provide a better connection. Uh, it's going to provide a more reliable uh, sound experience because it eliminates more of that jitter, uh, more of that uh, distortion so that your music sounds clear and whatever audio you're passing by through there. I don't know. It's your thing. Anyway, this is the volume, volume knob and it's a very smooth, very nice experience. This, uh, this ridge right here, you get used to it after a while. Um, at first, I thought it was kind of weird because I came from the uh, the Shift Magni Shift Shit Magni to Uber, which uh, was very different from this. And at first, I thought I would never get used to it, but actually, I kind of learned to work around it, and now I actually kind of prefer this kind of thing. So, very very nice. I do like it. Let's look at the rear. This is where the power goes in through. As you can see, it's not an ordinary type of plug. That's because you're dealing with, a, you know, a balanced amp here, quote unquote. So your power delivery has to be a little different just to ensure that it is as efficient and as powerful and as clean as it can possibly be. These are your RCA in and outs that, well, self-explanatory, the left, that's where your DAC passes the info to or a previous amp, a preamp. And then the audio out, that's where it gets passed through to either another amp or uh, speakers or anything else that you've got going on. You can totally do that. And here is your power switch. Beautiful. Let me explain something about the audio out though. Unlike with the Magni 2 Uber, this is only a pass-through, meaning let's say you have your speakers going through this and you don't have a headphone plugged in. You decide to plug in a headphone through the front and you're like, oh, okay, well, once it plugs in, the speaker uh, sound will cut off, right? Like I won't be able to hear the speakers anymore because obviously now the sound is going through here. No, the sound is just being, it's just going out through both sides at all times. So if you want to use your speakers, you don't have to remove your headphones but I don't really know how you feel about your headphones getting that, you know, that use time in when you're not even listening to them and they're just off to the side. I mean, me personally, I'd just rather not do that to preserve the headphones for as long as possible. And on the flip side, if you're using your headphones, you got to pretty much turn off your speakers or use a workaround to, uh, to mute them or to just prevent the power from, uh, prevent the, the, the sound from coming out of the speakers. Now here's my personal workaround. This is how I worked around it. And well, it works perfectly fine. I have my DAC, right? 
my DAC then puts out to my amp. The amp either puts out through the front here to my headphones or through the rear to my speakers. But instead of going directly to my speakers, I have it going into the shit sis, which is a, a switch eventually, essentially. And it has a volume knob, uh, which I don't believe introduces distortion because it's not another like electronic unit. It's simply a switch. So, but I set mine anyway to 3 a.m. just to be on the safe side and no issues. And it also switches, of course, between either one in to two outs or two ins to one out. And what I chose to do here was introduce it. Uh, well, frankly, it doesn't matter at this point, one in to two outs or vice versa. I only have one connected and it goes from the speaker to the sys to the... I mean the speaker, the amp to the sys to the speakers. Either way, you're going to have a uh, you're going to have a working product, and that is what I do. So let's say my speakers are on my monitors, and I'm listening to them like that. Obviously, the switch is on, and then I want to listen to headphones. All I do is toggle the switch on the sys, and it cuts off everything um, after the switch, which is of course the speakers. And now I can just use my headphones. And that's how I get that to work. And it's a very good experience. I've had no issues with that whatsoever. And if it weren't for amps like the AAA 789 or other of the higher end amps that people speak, people highly regard, you know, uh, that they say, well, yeah, it's really a bang for the buck. And I know you're paying a lot, but it's really worth your money. Absolute end game for sure. Diminishing returns are like, of course they're existent, but they're much less than with other products. I strongly recommend it. If it weren't for those products, this right here could easily be an end game option, except for the fact that this isn't truly balanced. And I say that because, well, you're getting the connection through RCA and then the components on the inside are kind of like, uh, kind of fixing the sound itself to be balanced, but in reality, it's it's a fake balance, but it's still better than uh, single-ended unbalanced. So kudos for kudos to Aoun for creating a product like this, like the X7S, especially at its price point. Uh, right now, if you check it out through Amazon, it's $300. And at that price point, it's a bit iffy. I don't know if I'd spend 300 on this, but if you go through mass drop, they have these drops for about $180 for the US and a few other countries. I'm not exactly sure which other country, so you may want to check that out yourself. But for the United States, this unit is $180. And for that price, it's a serious contender for those thinking, oh, well, I'll probably spend like $100 or $120 on a simple amp and a simple DAC, another $100 or so. And that would be it. And I don't plan on spending anything more than that just because I, I can't really afford or I'm not really interested in the premium features of the higher end amps, right? But then you have something like this, it provides a type of balance for you. And at the price of 180, you're kind of thinking, well, maybe I just save a few, you know, an extra 50, $80, and I get something that might truly be an end game for me. I definitely think this is, this is a serious contender for, uh, I guess, a moderate end game you know, where you're not incredibly serious about the audio or you just simply can't afford amps that are like, you know, 300 and above and stuff. This is a great option right here. Uh, as far as the heat goes, it does get hot, but it's just, it's just warmth. It's really just ever so slightly warm. You can definitely feel the warmth if you touch it, but it's nothing, it's nothing terrible. It's perfectly fine. And uh, I have no issues with it. It's not like you're going to burn everything around you so don't worry about that um but thing to note here at the top i don't know if you can see there the top of the amp is not a hundred percent flat it is a little curved which means that if you're planning on putting something on top of this only if it if the legs underneath the unit are tall enough will you succeed doing that if they are short though it's probably going to scratch up right here in the center so i would keep an eye out for that and just make sure that you, the unit that you have uh, can do that. Make sure it fits into your setup. I mean, it's not a very huge amp to begin with. You know, there's my hand right there. 
and it's not much not much wider than my hand itself so no worries there um, I've owned this unit for about what a year and a half now and it's served it's served perfectly no issues with it no pops no jitters no weird things happening with it and I've been very happy with it for sure and uh, yeah I do recommend this unit for sure Aoun X7S go for it all right so I'm kind of an idiot uh, I talked about everything relating to the X7S except the sound itself I was pretty vague I just said it was real clean and no problems with it and while that is true I should kind of mention the other details of it too um, so before this, I said I had the Magni 2 Uber, which I thought was a, you know, it's a great amp, great functionality, great sound, great everything about it. And when I upgraded to the X7S, I realized that's only partially true. It does have great functionality, but the hard, the hard truth behind it is that it has quite a bit of distortion, even for an amp uh, at its price point. So... I, if I have the Magnitude Uber on my recommended list, I think I'm just going to remove it because, yeah, on second thought, it's actually quite a bit distorted for uh, what it should be. It's almost up to standards, but not quite yet. Anyway, this isn't about the Tuber, it's about the X7S. When I upgraded to the X7S, I definitely noticed an improvement in the quality of the music and the, the clarity and the detail of everything that was presented. It was it was a definite upgrade for sure. Not just in terms of functionality, but in terms of the sound itself. It was definitely night and day. Um, I did notice the highs kind of getting a little more tame, probably just because I've heard that the shit sound is, the in-house sound is just kind of a extra hot, I think. Um, so when you pair that with a shit DAC and a shit amp, it makes it absolutely like extra hot, right? So when I first upgraded my amp and I still had my shit DAC, I did notice a reduction in terms of treble, which for my ears was good because I think the treble was uh, getting to me a bit. So do keep that in mind. I think the Aoun might be closer to what may be considered absolute neutral. Uh, and as far as everything else, it's just very, very clean, very sharp. Not, not sharp, but uh, very... Very polished, I guess, yeah, very, very smooth, not really any, uh, you know, jitter and stuff like that, especially for an amp that costs, well, now costs like 180 on mass drop or 200 when I bought it. Uh, it's a great unit. I do recommend. See it.